Warsaw has become a major hub of creative talent for artists from around the former Soviet Union, especially after Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Yulia Krivich is from Ukraine and has lived in Poland for more than a decade. She now organizes exhibitions, workshops and other events at Warsaw's Museum of Modern Art, aiming to confront what she sees as the collective trauma of Russian colonialism. I'm really happy to be and live in Warsaw. I live in Poland because I don't have to explain basic things. I don't have to deal with this feeling of helplessness every day because everyone here understands what's going on. So this is such a very important fact that I think attracts people too. A lot of my friends from Kyrgyzstan, Ukraine or Belarus feel close mentally, culturally and ideologically. Even before Russian troops poured into Ukraine in 2022, Poland had been hosting thousands of migrants from the east. People fled from a Moscow-backed uprising in eastern Ukraine and turmoil in Belarus. One of them is Marina Daszak, who has worked as a theatre producer in Poland since 2013. It was after the crushing of anti-government protests in Belarus in 2020 that she focused on working with fellow Belarusian artists. She said it was Russian-born playwright and director Ivan Parapayev who proposed producing a play with Belarusian actors when artists started fleeing to Poland. That was the start of the play 1.8M, which refers to the space available to individuals in overcrowded Belarusian prisons. Its director Piripayev was arrested in May by a Moscow court in absentia for spreading fake news about the Russian army. I generally think that this is a chance for Poland, a chance that should not be missed, and it's a friendly opening up. Not to be a closed country, but to open up and build an even more interesting one space for dialogue on this. The director has now launched a new project in Warsaw, Teal House. It is staffed by Ukrainian and Belarusian refugees and offers activities ranging from drama and music performances to yoga and trauma healing. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu signaled impatience with resurgent demonstrations against his plan to overhaul the justice system. On Sunday, calling on his attorney general to attend a cabinet meeting for a grilling on police countermeasures to the protests. As the meeting began, Israeli media carried leaked quotes of some ministers calling for her to quit. Netanyahu said both opponents and supporters of the justice system reform have the right to demonstrate peacefully, but while the government has not considered restricting this right, it is requested to receive a report on what is the enforcement policy regarding violations of the law that infringe on the basic rights of millions of citizens and which are carried out almost on a daily basis during the demonstrations. Street protests have flared and protesters plan to converge near Israel's main airport as parliament debates the bill on Monday. That's when Netanyahu's religious nationalist coalition is due to bring, for its first ratification reading, a bill that would limit reasonableness as a standard of judicial review. Critics say the bill's passage would open the door for abuses of power. But Netanyahu, who is on trial on graft charges he denies, says the aim is to restore balance among branches of government. U.S. President Joe Biden touched down in London on Sunday night ahead of this week's NATO summit in Lithuania. Biden is set to hold separate meetings Monday with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and King Charles with discussions focused on Ukraine and climate change respectively. This is Biden's first visit to Downing Street as president and his fifth meeting with Sunak in as many months. The trip comes against the backdrop of Washington's recent decision to supply Ukraine with cluster bombs. The UK is one of 120 countries which has signed a convention banning their use due to their threat to civilian populations. Sunak and Biden are expected to share notes before the NATO summit, which starts on Tuesday and will be dominated by the war in Ukraine, as well as the country's bid to become a member of the Defence Alliance. In a CNN interview aired Sunday, 
Biden appeared to throw cold water on the prospect of Ukraine joining anytime soon, saying, quote, I don't think there is unanimity in NATO about whether or not to bring Ukraine into the NATO family now, at this moment, in the middle of a war. After Downing Street, Biden plans to hold talks with King Charles at Windsor Castle, where discussions are expected to centre around the climate crisis. I departed Las Vegas about 3.15 a.m. this morning and uh, it was on an instrument, an IFR instrument flight rules flight plan to French Valley Airport. Flight was about 45 minutes. Um, however, shortly before landing, a uh, marine layer began to envelop the area with uh, low ceilings and visibilities. The pilot reported to air traffic control that he was going to perform a missed approach, uh, which is generally happens when a pilot can't see the runway environment. Air traffic control then provided the pilot with a clearance to perform the public mist approach and then cleared the airplane to return for landing again. Airplane crashed about 500 feet short of uh, runway 18, which was the original, appeared to be the original intended landing runway. Uh, debris field was about 200 feet long. Uh, most of the airplane, with the exception of the tail, was consumed by uh, fire. Six people on board and all were fatal. So we plan on spending the next one, possibly two days on scene, then recovering the airplane to a secure facility where we'll continue the investigation.